Hello, and welcome to Dying for Canvas, previously called The Art Shack. The reason for the name change is quite simple. It felt like a pair of ill-fitting trousers. I'm the sole proprietor of this channel. I'm the sole artist, so it didn't make sense to make it seem like it was a collaborative channel. Uh, and also, it was an inside joke with me and my wife for a while. So when I started it up, I was going with that inside joke. It, it just didn't feel right. Plus, it didn't fit with my other branding, such as my graphic design branding and other branding that I have existing that I might tie into this channel. So I just changed the name. I figured I was, I'm small enough. I'm, I mean, I'm massively small. So with that said, I decided to change it now. Then getting when I if I do get bigger, changing it that way. So. That's why there's a name change for any future queries. So I also put that in the discussion. And so I'm going to start a still life for Valentine's Day. It's not going to be done by Valentine's Day. But I'll, uh, we've been having a lot of issues within my complex. And one of them is that they're replacing all the roofs on the complex. So there's been a bunch of hammering. So I figured I don't want a bunch of hammering in my video. And they don't get done until really late at night, about 9 o'clock-ish. So there's no point in trying to paint the still life. But my idea was simple. I was going to show you what my still life is, uh, how to set up your canvas for that, for any painting from, from now on. Uh, and so you have a basic idea of what, what to do with that new canvas, what each sort of piece is and other questions you may have um, and then I'll show you the still life I sort of explain what I did to the still life to make it work and then I'll start painting once they're almost done with the roof so I should start painting here really soon so let's get into um, the canvas so this is a relatively new canvas it's been on my canvas shelf so this brand is a Centrion LX. It's a deluxe professional paintable edge. It has a deluxe professional paintable edge. It's linen stretch canvas. It's for oils, acrylics, caissons, and alkalides. It's 620 gram heavy weight linen, all purpose premium surface, staple free edges, and acid free primer. Guaranteed to last 500 years. So, that's that. It's 12 by 16. That's where you would find it. And you can see here that the staples are not on the edge here. They're stapled here. So, when you, I have stretched canvas in the past, and I like to stretch my own canvas. Uh, stretching canvas is both... Uh, can be very tedious on the muscles, and can be just very tedious and is also very expensive. I mean, duck canvas alone for a roll is about 250. Uh, linen goes for about 500, and those are the cheaper ends. Uh, so you're looking that, and then you have the the framing. So you could either make your own framing, or you can buy your own framing, and again, that's money. Uh, another way, what I used to do in art school, one of the projects that we had was using. Uh, wood and this project you can use if you have a bunch of wood laying around and you want to get into painting You can use wood. There's you can almost paint on any, any surface. It's just you have to prime it uh, Especially with oils priming is essential acrylics. You could paint on anything uh, Acrylics has a, a base bond of plastic So that's why it dries fast and that's why you can stick to buildings and things like that oils on the other hand You have to prime there's a lot of time to dry and it just it doesn't work for that that's why there's a way to do it like frescoes and stuff like that using plaster and I mean that's what the masters used to do uh, you know like in the Sistine Chapel and stuff like that it's very tedious to paint a mural with oils uh, if you're gonna get into mural art obviously you want to use uh, acrylics plus is cheaper so but since I paint primarily in oils, we're going to go with just our good old classic canvas. So 
let's get into it, shall we? So I'm gonna un now the like I said it was on my it's been on my shelf and plus through a move or two. So that's why the plastic is like that. There's no damage to the plastic. Uh that's going to hurt. There's no damage to the the canvas, the plastic. The canvas that's going to hurt it. There's like it looks like a little dent here, but that's just minor cosmetic. And uh, I actually had a canvas rip and I actually incorporated something behind the canvas. So you could do a lot of stuff with canvas if something goes bad. If it rips a little bit, you can incorporate other aspects to that canvas uh, to give it sort of a, a more interesting dimension. So if you accidentally have a canvas ripped before you paint on it, don't stress about it, don't throw it away. Try to incorporate something else into it. So into the canvas. I don't remember how much, I think this was actually a, a, pres, a gift at one point, so. So take off your plastic. Remember, don't, uh, don't put this in the oven with plastic on. I'm also joking. And then take off this. Again, if you wanna read it. So. So every canvas comes with some wood pieces that look like this. And what you do with these wood pieces is you take them out and they go in the corners where there are slots. See the slots here? And here. So all of them, all corners have these two slots. So you, you take your plastic, your, gosh, I have plastic on the brain, I guess. So you take your wood pieces and you see how it's, doesn't, this is cut. You put it in like so, bite with it. So, lose part of it in the canvas. All right, that's what I do. And then these are offset. So, and they buckle up like this. And then, I'm trying to remember how to do this. And that should pretty much seal that, make that corner a little bit more sturdy. Um, now we're going to do the rest of the pieces. You just have to finagle with them. Make sure that they are wanting to stay. Sometimes you just have to sort of like an odd puzzle. It's just you have to figure out so which ones work. So, right. Now we'll do the bottoms. Okay. Let's work in different spots in the last few. I 
Yeah, I think I got it in there. So it just wants to be finicky. Huh. snug going around checking that they're tight so the idea behind these are they're sort of like screws uh, and or nails or whatever and that it just stretches the canvas out just a little bit more making it a little bit more stable so it doesn't wiggle because during transportation obviously you want to give it a little give or you're gonna have a broken frame so the back of the canvas all right so although all canvases come gessoed that's what this white is as you can see this is the natural linen and obviously the grain uh, but that's what what this white sort of face is is gesso well this is an industrial gesso and not saying that old Industrial gessos are bad. I like to gesso, make sure that I gesso over uh, the the pre-prepared, just to make sure that there's no sinking pre-prepared surface. So there's no, uh, you know, like with a marker, it seeks into the pa the paper. Well, the same thing could happen with an ill-prepared canvas surface so to avoid that we we'll just uh, gesso over it with some gesso that we have uh, the brand is called golden it's bright white acrylic primer gesso and I always get the big tube um, it's more cost efficient in the long run than buying the small tubes although at first you're like oh I'll just buy the small tubes then you realize you need more and more gesso as you paint. So, um, that's what this is. So on the back here, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see well. So this is 16 fluid ounces. So the back is, uh, it's closer to opaque than transparent. It's a, it has some matting to it, but not much. Uh, it's more matte than it is gloss. It's closer to matte. And you want to go with the matte because the gloss with the wrong light, it could really hurt your painting. Uh, and it, and when you varnish it, it could cause more glare than you want. Um, and this is sort of like on the thinner side, but not... It's like medium light thin if that makes sense because of the their scale uh, it's ready to use white toothy uh, semi-absorbent 100 silicone ground maybe wet sanded uh, maybe thinned up to 25 percent water for oil paint apply a minimum of three coats to avoid oil penetration allow gesso to dry thoroughly Apply above 49 degrees Fahrenheit, 9 degrees centigrade. So if you live in Antarctica, um, you're going to have to find another primer. Always test your application clean with soap and water. So that's what this is. And it just creates a barrier between you and, the, and whatever you're working on, paper or whatever. Uh, I, especially when I work on my illustrations, I use... Always not the best type of paper, I guess. I use different types of paper and I always apply either the white acrylic or the clear acrylic because of my illustrations I always draw it out and add in shades and I'll show you that later on my process with illustration but I use a, a similar acrylic but it's just opaque I mean it's transparent opaque is 
you don't see through it. Transparent is you see through it. Just in case if you didn't know that. Uh, because and I always get that confused for some reason. Not in when I actually need to do stuff, but just when I'm talking. Yeah. So anyway. So gesso. So uh, my suggestion is don't dip out of your containers if you can avoid it. It creates cross-contamination because your brush may not be the cleanest. And you may not realize it until you start dipping in and then all of a sudden you've got paint or uh, flakes. So I've dedicated my own, I have my own dedicated acrylic brush and it's just, it's a thick, just regular, go down to the hardware store, Walmart, whatever, uh, sort of natural hair brush, you can do that. And I have an old muffin tin that is rusted and is no longer good for baking muffins, but great for holding gesso. And as you can see, the gesso is sort of separated because I just poured it into this, um, this, this container. And so I'm going to have to stir it up a little bit like this, just, and that also creates your brush. As you can see, just like that. I'll put this down here, bump into the, the thing, and I'll take my canvas and just get as thorough as you can. And you'll use a lot of gesso, it's fine. That's why you get the big containers. Try to try to go in one direction, uh, usually with the grain, don't do what I do. Try to smooth it out as much as you can. That's why you do this back and forth type thing. Uh, it's just to create a smooth, but you try to want to end up on the with the grain. But just do what you think is for your styles. And sometimes you can get really interesting textures with your gesso if you like textures. I actually got some accidental textures in my last painting. The uh, the waves of Saturn, and it didn't really show up on film all that well, but definitely created some unique textures that I am quite happy with, actually. Uh, so, and just make sure that it's thoroughly coated, and then like it says, apply three, make sure you get your edges, because you always want to paint your edges of your painting. And that way, it doesn't create this weird... It doesn't have to be everything you painted. You could actually have designs. I actually have thicker uh, canvases that I will use later on that you could actually put uh, stuff on the side. But just make sure that you get the edges. And color paint your edges so it doesn't create a weird sort of like cliff of color I see a lot of uh, a lot of beginner painters make that mistake and it sort of hurts the painting in the long run because when you when you if you don't frame your stuff just in the hangs it's just going to create this weird sort of um, visual. So just get into the habit and you could even use just your base coating and then like I did on the, the Ways of Saturn I just uh, I didn't do a lot of intricate coloring on it I just did enough to so it didn't uh, cliff off that's all. So it looked like a continuous piece all the way around. I, so I'll just put this on the can on, the, on my uh, Bump it into again onto my easel here. Let it dry, and then I'll apply the other ones. All right. Oh yeah, I also got a, a an apron, so I so 
I don't I can minimize the damage to my shirts. Alright, so but still wear clothes that you're not gonna wear every day. Don't wear your fancy clo work clothes, let's just put it that way. Alright, now into the still life. So this is my Valentine still life. It seems like a diorama that you used to do in like school. It's grade school and middle school and then some high school. Uh so it's not because of that, because I had to have something that could basically string it. I can uh, have taunt. So I just use an old Walmart container. And then I bought this fake rose. And I have some lights in here and it create and so I can have so I'm not using other light that will be that's not gonna be exact all the time. So uh, because I paint during any hours that I can. So this is it. It's a bondage of a rose. And uh, this is going to be the new still life. So I have three different lights in it. Uh, and a lot of duct tape. And a lot of string. So I think the stringing, the, the binding of this took me about six hours to do. Um, so yeah, it took me quite a while. I would have filmed it, but... Uh, uh, a lot of it was just me playing around it was trying to get the right type so I thought that would that would have been a great film uh, a great video so this is the end product and then so all these lights come from like Dollar Tree so and also pick up batteries with the uh, this one at least this is a push light as you can see I'm focusing on these pedals. Uh, so and I've had to duct tape it, although it has adhesive at the bottom. It had I duct taped it so it didn't fall down. And then I have two of those candle lights. They do flicker minimally, but they have a warm color. And as you can see at the bottom, instead of disrupting the placement of my lights, I cut where the switches would be with a uh, just a regular pocket knife and these if anybody's ever used these they're a little difficult to switch on that's why I did this there we go and all together you can see how that looks and without that light, you can see. So that's going to be there, my still life. And like I said, it's going to have all these lights on so I can focus on different areas of it. So, and I'll be putting that, I have this little cart that I use that I'll use as my table. Those off. Put those back on. So that's a still life. That's how you prime your painting uh, to start. And as you, can, I'm going to do it horizontal. Uh, my last one was vertical. And uh, that's today's video. Uh, a few things I wanted to bring up. Uh, I thought would be really interesting. So I bought this new new I, I bought bought I, I don't I got this new painting container off Amazon and I was sort of like a purchase that I thought I looked at and I didn't and uh, make sure that you uh, I, it's a new brush washer make sure that you look at the the sizes of things um, because I bought this now, this is great. This is exactly what I want. I just bigger. <laughs> so I'll be buying one when I have the money to. Uh, I already have one picked out at another place and I'll probably do an unboxing of art supplies 
because I was going to buy some other art supplies at some point. So this is what I was talking about. The, these have these latches. These are these are great. It keeps in the odor. It doesn't leak. And then you just take it off. It's a sealed container. And then you have your grate, removable grate. Put it back in. So I was probably going to use this for my gouache stuff. And then when my niece comes over, when we paint, she'll use that. Uh, and one other thing. Uh, so I got this cool light uh, off of Amazon. And if you are like me and have not the, the best lighting imaginable because you rent or you're, you don't have the money to put in track lighting, which is ideal. I uh, got this cool little lamp that works and that's actually what this is. And as you can see, it's just a, it's an LED light stand. This is in the corner there. And it has a, a remote. And uh, what's really cool is you can, for for, in, for instance, like because I'm just filming, you can up and down the light. You can actually change the colors. And uh, I'll do some uh, another video on how color affects your painting. So stay tuned for that. And uh, till next time, I'll see you around. All right, bye.